In the previous episode, we explored Russian historian Anatoly Fomenko's claims about historical copy-pasting between rulers from different nations. Fomenko highlights eerie similarities, showing how the reigns of Navarrese and Swedish kings match up almost identically in their durations. He even draws comparisons between the Habsburg and Russian empires, suggesting their monarchs might as well be the same people. Could these monarchies be fabrications? with lazy scribes recycling stories and slightly altering names and details. Fomenko's examples go further, comparing lists of popes and drawing parallels between England and the Byzantine Empire, suggesting the possibility of large-scale historical forgery. But the timeline gaps make things even stranger. In places like Japan, Shanghai, and Seoul, vast stretches of history seem to disappear only to be followed by significant global events, revolutions, and wars between 1775 and 1850, a period of reset where monarchies were toppled and replaced by democracies. During this interregnum, mysterious events like the year without a summer in 1816 and the New Madrid earthquakes add to the intrigue. Witnesses reported strange phenomena, lightning, fire spewing ground, electric shocks, and sulfurous mists. Following this reset, cities like Chicago and San Francisco seem to spring up out of nowhere, emerging from the mud showcased at Grand World Fairs. Anyway, this is part two of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. We used to live in a society where royals ruled by divine right. Their right to rule was decreed from heaven. Modernists claim that the revolution served the purpose of giving power back to we the people, making the whole world more democratic and free. For a long time, I believed this. My view has meanwhile matured to acknowledge that the democracy and rule by the people was a deceptive ploy to win our hearts and never suspect foul play by our new overlords. In reality, nobody democratically chose the most important events of the 19th and 20th century. Did your grandparents have a say in nuclear bomb testing? Did you have any say in forced nation? Was your vote taken over sending hundreds of billions to the Ukraine? Of course not. You're not living in a democracy and never have, at least not in the things that matter. Our social media runs the same scheme. It's made to look like a democratic and organic sharing of ideas between regular folk. In reality, non-conforming views are throttled and shadow banned, while pre-selected influencers are given millions of followers to make it look like they are popular. The formerly open absolute rule was replaced by a hidden absolute rule, a hidden kingdom that pretended to benefit us commoners, formerly peasants. This has become more clear to more people in the last years. The countries labeled the most democratic and least authoritarian do this. World War I and II were the final nails in the coffin of the old world. The Nazis and communists are responsible for the destruction of hundreds of thousands of buildings, monuments, statues, churches, and temples across Europe. Some alternative history researchers claim that Stalin or Hitler were fighting on the side of we the people against the hidden rulers, but the fruits of their work speak a different language. Europe and Russia became a junkyard of debris and left us with a traumatized and starving public who had zero interest in their history. It's only from a place of relative comfort one begins to ask questions and examine things neutrally. This drawing is of Augsburg, Germany, from the year 1777. Augsburg can be found on maps ranging back 1,000 years. Historians say it's 2,000 years old. It's one of many examples of what a city or town looked like prior to the revolution and interregnum. Not just European cities that looked like this. Looking at old maps, we see these fortified cities full of grand architecture. These spires, cathedrals, pyramids, star forts, etc. In Africa, America, Asia, the Middle East, Antarctica, Russia as previously shown. We've been told our ancestors were primitive. We were told they were so filthy, they didn't use toilets or wash. They oppressed common people. I doubt all of these claims. 
I've devised this formula on how any amateur can prove fabricated history. One, take an awe-inspiring place built sometime between 1860 and 1899. Two, compare to maps, stories, paintings, and reports prior to 1860. Three, note the discrepancy. Done. I've used this formula many times. Just one example. One, Neuschwanstein Castle. A spectacular building claimed to be built in 1869. 2. A map of the region from 1619. It shows a castle exactly where Neuschwanstein or Neuschwanstone is. Back then it was called New Hohenschwangau or New High Swanland. 3. Subsequently I learned that A. The construction photos show the castle already complete. B. I learned that the new castle was built on the ruins of a previous one. The tour guide never mentioned that. C. I learned that there are plenty of old photos, drawings, postcards of the nearby castle, Hohenschwangau, but none of the second castle that was supposed to have preceded the current one and stood there for hundreds of years. Why no images of the previous castle? Because they don't want you to know that it looked just like the new one. Long story short, the beautiful castle is a thousand years old. This formula works because history fakery started in the late 1800s, at the end of the millennium. Why is all of this coming to light now? Alternative history researcher at Tartaria Lives believes it started with the era of Donald Trump. All this coming to light is a sign that the era of this series of hidden rulers is coming to an end. Yet another piece of timeline fakery appears to have been the adding of 1,000 years to our timeline. Here's another post by a Tartaria Lives which goes into detail on the topic. In summary, the letter I or J was reframed to mean the number one. Thus, the year 1435 is actually the year J 435 or I 435. I saw an example of this on a recent walk through the old Biltmore Estate in North Carolina. Historians call this the year 1528, but it's really J 528 and I 528. Once you know it, you see it everywhere in old paintings, sculptures, maps, etc. The J stands for Jesus, the I stands for Isa or Jesus, other names for Jesus. So, 1528 is really the year 528 of Jesus. After the interregnum, the J turned into a 1. This, then, is the reason there seems to be another gap in history and also so-called Dark Ages. It's not clear what happened between the year 1 and 999 because these were the thousand years added to our chronology. This is the phantom time hypothesis, in case you wish to look it up. That's plenty to digest for now. If this write-up expanded your awareness, please share it. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.